What's up my biker friends? I hope you're doing well. I'm riding in the rain in France and since we have to go a bit slower now, I figured I might do a little review of my gear that I'm wearing. My riding suit. That's an older version of a Climb Latitude Misano. The newer versions of this Latitude are using less and less uh, sturdier material. Uh, so I think it moved down the line too. Price point probably still the same uh, in the range of, I think it's seven, 800 euros for the jacket and about 600 for the pants. Um, the reason why I bought Climb, and that's a major, major advantage. Now other manufacturers have now sort of closed that gap with the design of their clothing, but at the time, Climb was the only one that had a proper four season suit. What I mean by that is, first of all, it's using the Gore-Tex Pro Shell. Uh, so it's a laminated uh, Gore-Tex membrane that is laminated into the outer fabric. Uh, most jackets will have a Gore-Tex liner that is inside the jacket, you can remove it. And that's nice that you can remove it, but the problem with that is, the entire outer shell will soak up with water. So I've been riding in the rain for like an hour now. Most garments would now be soaked with water and they get heavy and it gets really cold once, it's, once the water starts evaporating. Now this uh, Gore-Tex uh, Pro Shell, it laminates the two materials together so the Gore-Tex membranes are very, very close to the outer shell. So there isn't a lot of water that it will so uh, soak up. It dries really quickly uh, once the rain stops and it keeps the jacket really light. I mean, of course it will soak up some water, but a lot less than typical garments. That's a huge advantage, and they were one of the first ones to do that properly. Now, other manufacturers have done that too. Um, what makes this a four season jacket is the fact that Climb put vents in that actually vent directly through the shell. So directly uh, through the jacket, you can almost like reach through. Um, that allows you to open up the jacket. I think it's going the wrong way. Let's see. No. <laughs> I mean, it's nice up here, but it's super nice actually. Wow, check out this view. Very, very nice. Well, let's see where it takes us. Um, four season riding. So, the fact that you can open the vents up directly to the jacket will allow you to actually get some proper airflow. And so, most jackets, probably 95% of the jackets on the market, will have vents. But if they have some kind of a waterproof liner, oh, that was heavy braking. Oh, full bremsung. We are falsch. Ja, ja. Dann wieder zurück. Von oben vor oben drehen, wo es geht. So we just turned around, heading back down to the actual route. Um, I'm not sure where this takes us. Probably would have been fine too, but we have a set route. Uh, we're gonna get back onto it again. So, the air vents. <laughs> we'll start over with the air vents. The air vents of the uh, climb jacket will open straight through the jacket. And that's a huge advantage to make that a four season riding jacket because it gets proper airflow into the jacket. 95% yeah, of the uh, jackets on the market that have some kind of waterproof lining will only vent onto the liner, especially if it's one of those inserted liners. Uh, it will vent onto the liner, so you're not gonna get proper airflow in the jacket. So if you're riding the thing at 35 degrees C's, which we did just a couple of days ago, there's no way you can leave that liner in the jacket. You have to remove it. Um, that's one of the major advantages with this performance shell you can just leave it at this it starts raining you close up those vents and you're good to go no fiddling around with some kind of liner no fiddling around with uh, rain gear we just saw um, another rider under a bridge you know putting his rain gear on and you know how it is with your wet shoes trying to fit into the pants and it doesn't fit and it gets stuck and the same with the jacket no this stuff is awesome you can ride it for hours in the rain it's waterproof for life and it actually works it doesn't mean there's no water ever getting into the jacket, but it's not getting through the Gore-Tex shell, but it's getting into the jacket through the opening. So obviously the sleeves, where your gloves are, and the collar, um, you know, if there's enough rain coming sideways, 
you will get wet after a while, um, but it's not because the vortex. Um, it's especially important for the pants when you're sitting and there's water piling up in your crotch area. It's really nasty when you start uh, when the pants start leaking, which they never have. They've never failed me on the waterproofness. So, climb gear, cool stuff. Nowadays, of course, there's other manufacturers that do a similar thing. You know, building a um, a weather shell or performance shell, what this is. It also doesn't come, I think none of the climb gear comes with any kind of thermal insulation. It's sort of bring your own uh, insulating layer, your own base or mid layer, which makes perfect sense. I always rip those things out anyway, not some of the older jackets. I never understood the reason why you have to zip into your outer shell uh, some kind of a thermal liner. You can just like wear a, a soft shell or fleece under the jacket. I don't know what the point of, of zipping it into your coat. And so if you're getting too warm, you have to zip it all out. It's just super annoying to do that. Especially if you're, you know, we're riding in the summer. We have temperatures between eight degrees and 35 degrees Celsius in a single day. So just like fiddling around with your clothing just to get your uh, to the right temperature is a pain in the ass. Now it's a huge disadvantage, of course, wearing textile clothing is when you crash, obviously the abrasion resistance even the best textile stuff isn't as good as the cheapest leather that you can buy. And unfortunately I had to test it out myself. Uh, I low sided this bike for the first time, first time crash ever. And yeah, the jacket got damaged and so did the pants. Not enough that I can't ride with it anymore. I just have to sort of tape it up. See that <laughs> tape? So to make sure that no water comes through. But yeah, uh, that happens. You crash with it on the road. Maybe one of these days someone will figure something out that textile clothing will actually withstand the crash and you don't have to like rebuy the stuff. This is really expensive um, clothing, so you don't want to keep buying it every time you slip off your bike. Anyway, that's climb, awesome stuff. But like I said, look for a Gore-Tex Pro Shell. Um, that's definitely the way to go when you're thinking of Gore-Tex, and it definitely pays to pay extra and get Vortex, there's other options out there, but um, it's well worth the money for me, I have to say. And then make sure that the vents work, if it's important for you, that you want to ride this in warm weather as well. I think Alpine Star started making clothing like this as well, but Climb were the first ones, and I think all their uh, gear that is Vortex Pro Shell offer vents, like the jacket that I have on. Okay, down to the boots. The boots are Alpine Stars, Toucan, I think. It's been around for a long time. Columbus actually has got the same boots. Essentially, there's two different kinds. I think CD and Alpine Stars. They both make sort of boots geared towards the adventure rider. In essence, there's a lot of it from a, from the Enduro or Motocross boot in, in the boot that you know, when it comes to protection and the sturdiness of it, just add it with a bit more comfort. So you can walk them in a bit longer. They're waterproof. They are Gore-Tex. I think they run about 350 euros. Again, every cent well spent on the boots. They're awesome. So I've had them for 60,000 kilometers and they're still very comfortable. I mean, they wear out, of course, um, but they're still going strong. I can probably still keep them for quite a while. And the waterproofness, I tested it in many rain rides. It leaks absolutely no water. And one of the worst things in riding in the rain is getting wet feet because it really cools you down quickly too. Uh, and that sucks. So those boots, thumbs up. Absolutely recommend those boots. Then gloves. I have right now for the rain gear, these are the only thing that are not Gore-Tex. It's a material called OutDry. Got this motorcycle uh, clothing store, Louis here. And it's I think it's their own brand that uses that material it's called Outright. It's very similar to what Gore-Tex Pro Shell is doing, so laminating the weatherproof membrane to the outer shell. Because the problem with the rain gloves it always is, you know, you put them on, you have sort of semi-wet hands, you pull them out and then sort of the, the lining comes out and it's always fiddly. Or they're not waterproof, <laughs> you just, uh, they just leak water. Um, so I do test my gear, all the Gore-Tex, not the, not the jacket and the pants, but the shoes and the gloves. I actually put them in a bucket of water for five minutes and see if they leak water. And they shouldn't. They shouldn't leak any water. 
if they do, uh, I'll send it back. Because um, that's the main functionality, is actually keeping waterproofness. So these are waterproof, work really well. Uh, actually keep me dry for a long time. They're summer riding gloves, so they're not uh, insulated at all. They're just a summer riding rain option. I usually don't ride when it's super cold and in the rain. Um, so in the winter time, I don't go on long trips and I don't ride when it's wet and it has like four degrees outside. So it's a some option. My um, summer non-rain, so sunny weather day riding gloves are Alpine stars. I forgot the name of it. They're short. Um, the this, sleeve this is sort of short, which I like because it fits better under my uh, my jacket. Um, it's got the nice protective features on it. I, I will just put the link in the description. There's tons of gloves you can get. But what I like about these is they have um, they allow you to use your touch screen on your phone. So that's really a nice feature to have because I always have my phone when I'm riding. You know, I use it to monitor my action cam and now with the rain gloves I can't I can't use the touch screen unless these gloves are really wet then sometimes it works but these will work in the dry those Alpine Star gloves and I can fiddle around with my phone it's really cool um, I didn't know they had that feature actually when I bought them I didn't look for it but now this time around if I had to buy new gloves again that's what I would pay attention to it's obviously that they protect you well but that's one of the key functions. Most people have their cell phones on their bike nowadays. Well, a lot of people at least. So if you're looking for gloves, something to look out for. And then the stuff I wear underneath, um, you know, you can basically wear any sort of functional clothing. Typically, you're not supposed to wear cotton underneath. Actually, I started wearing cotton t-shirts again now. For some reason that works, but I've got functional clothing that, that I can use. Uh, so today on a wet day like this, there's no cotton in any of my setup. The one thing that I've added to the mix was actually a Kevlar liner underneath the riding pants. I just bought a new pair that has pockets to put uh, armor in for the knees. Because these pants, these climb pants are super wide and the armor would just like move around. And having the Kevlar liner with the armor pockets keeps the armor where it's supposed to be. And it gives an extra layer of abrasion resistance because obviously the textile, you know, that nylon fabric doesn't really last very long. And then when it comes to thermal lining, it's just, you know, soft gel jacket or any anything to, that you use for winter sports. Um, nothing special here. Same socks I use for skiing, I use for a motorcycle riding. They're, I think, wool, some kind of wool mixed fabric. Nothing special either. I mean, those shoes that I have on, they work in very cold and very warm. And I guess the socks help as well. Anyway, that is... Uh, that's my my gear review i hope it was helpful thank you for watching if you liked the video give me a thumbs up if you got something to add uh, please put it in the comment section i'd be really interested to hear what you have to say subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and like always thank you guys for watching good to see you guys and i'll see you in the next video ride safe